So what I've got here, I've got some parts, and, I, and I've got, you can kind of come in here and see what these are. This is a pelvis that I sculpted a while back, and I had Brad Lyford, uh, one of our members here, who we see from time to time, uh, make up a bunch of castings for me so I wouldn't have to reinvent these every time. This is a really, really rough uh, torso, you see here. And then I got a couple of shoes, a couple of, couple of shoes that I car sculpted a long time ago. Again, these are ones Brad cast up for me in large quantities. So I'd have some standard generic shoes, and these shoes can be modified and sanded and built up and made into whatever kind of footwear you want. And then I've got one of my favorite heads to use. I, I'm kind of like a, I'm kind of like a, if you ever go to the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland and you look at the pirate faces, um, you'll find that the same face keeps popping up again and again, but with different facial hair and different yeah. clothes and everything yeah, else. Different coloring. Well, my models are kind of like the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, I mean, if you, if you look at a lot of my models and you really, really uh, look, look carefully, you can say, man, he sure uses that head a lot. <laughs> yeah, but it looks a little different each time. But, man, I can see yeah, he's redone the eyes and he's changed the nose or he's added a beard or he's added a mustache or he's added some funky hair or whatever else. But... That looks like the same guy, you know. It's it's kind of like one of those guys, like it's like a vampire saga where he he just lives from century to century to century. It's always <laughs> the same guy, you know. It just he just the the style changes, you know. So I tend to have certain faces that I that I have in my head for using for certain things, and for this figure, I wanted a head that um, because it's a parade ground figure, it's pretty formal. I wanted a guy who looked a little elegant because this figure is going to look elegant. So I found a head that. Um, that looks uh, a little more like a young man, uh, sharper features, uh, kind of a serious expression, just pass that around. That's the one I picked. As you can see, I had a lot to choose from. Most of these are Hornet heads that I bought over the years. Um, Hornet, um, Hornet heads are all sculpted by Roger Saunders. Uh, I don't know if many of you guys know who he is. I, I know you do, you do, Steve. But he's been around for a long time, Saunders has. And Saunders, I still think, is is probably the he's like an iconic uh, 54 millimeter sculptor. I mean, he's been he was really one of the earliest inspirations for me with the precision and the detail that he got into his 54 mil and the and the anatomy and the accuracy and the, just the meticulousness of every fold and wrinkle and detail being just perfect. Really, really strong sculptor. And fortunately for all of us, he sculpts all kinds of heads and hands and all kinds of junk like that, which we can use. So. Uh, he's acutely aware that we use his stuff for conversions and things, so um, he hasn't sued me, so that's, that's good news. Um, but uh, he also does hands, by the way, and I have hands in here. Most, for the most part, hands I generally modify. If they're hanging loose and they're in a, they're in a pose that I like, I'll, I'll use them unmodified, but usually I cut the fingers off. And just the way you see here, this figure's got hands but no fingers. The fingers were removed because they'll be re-sculpted around the rifle once the rifle's uh, attached. And by the way, the rifle will be sculpted, the figure will be completely painted, the rifle will be completely painted, and then I'll scrape away a little bit of paint on the rifle, glue it into the hands, and I'll sculpt and then paint the hands as the last act because I find it too hard to really paint a rifle right when I have it already attached to a figure. It's just too hard to get the brush at the angles. I find I can see more than I can paint. Um, I, I shouldn't say I... One guy, one model in front of mine always said that if you could see it, you could paint it. And my counterpoint to that is, yes, but you can't paint it well, necessarily. You so you can see it well, but you can't necessarily paint it well. Yeah. So I prefer to paint rifles as separate items and then let them dry and then carefully attach them, sculpt the fingers around them, and then paint the fingers. And then if I have to touch up the rifle a little bit here and there, that's fine. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to start with, I'm just going to start by drilling some holes. And i got my trusty Dremel tool here. I'm hoping I selected the right Dremel <coughs> thickness for the uh, toothpicks that I've got. And I'm just kind of punching some holes that are going to go maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch deep, deep, maybe a quarter of an inch in a few places. Not really important that it be exact. I'm not going to mess around with arms right now. I really want to just kind of walk you through the process of getting the, the basic figure kind of stuck together. Um, I usually start off by drilling right through my, my feet, but if a foot's up in the air and it's not going to be touching the ground, I might have to fill in that hole, but I'm not really sure what pose I'm going to have this guy in just yet. So I'm going to start off by drilling right through both feet 
And the idea is the leg pins will go all the way through these heels into the ground and they will they will then go into the base, just the way you see with this guy. Those pins that stick out in the bottom of his feet, those pins go all the way up through his legs into his into his pelvis. So, um, so the first uh, and most important uh, part of this process is, you know, it's kind of funny because we were we were talking about before the meeting started. I was talking with some of the guys about, I think with David about, um, you know, our perceptions of. Um, artistic uh, things, whether it comes to redecorating a kitchen or, or it comes to building a model or painting a painting or whatever else. <coughs> Some people can visualize it and they can kind of see it in their mind already done and then you go back and then you then you're basically just try to then create. You're basically painting by the numbers based, you're copying a painting that you've already finished in your mind and now you're trying to put it so everybody else can see it as well. And other people have a hard time visualizing all that stuff. They have to kind of put it out there until my wife and I had this problem when we were de redecorating the kitchen. Well, honey, it's going to look like this. Well, it doesn't look right to me. And I said, well, can't you see? It's going to be like, uh, I can't see it. Said, well, show me something. And, I, you know, and, and it, it's, it's a funny thing with perception. But to me, usually when I, get, when I start working on a figure, usually when I go through the process of just getting the, the head oriented on the shoulders, that's when the whole figure kind of starts to come together for me. I can I can then kind of see where everything else is going to go. Arms and things like that are relatively minor uh, appendages in the whole process. It's basically the the head, the the torso, and the pelvis are. That's the whole ball game to me. I mean that's that's the key because essentially once that's oriented in the way you want it. Uh, the whole figure makes sense now to me at that stage. And the first step here is to make sure I don't have too much neck on the guy, and I think I do, so I'm going to cut a little bit more off. I, I have a pair of nippers that are better than these, but I forgot to, I stupidly forgot to bring those, so I'm having to do this a little, uh, a little bit of an old fashioned way. But. But the first thing is, I mean, obviously you want to make sure you got the head the right distance from the body. Normally I would carve this neck down a little bit to a point where there really wasn't any neck. I'd kind of round it off so essentially you just had like a little, almost like a thumb at the, at the base of it. So I could, because I'm going to have to build his neck up anyway. So I'm not really that worried about that right now. But generally with elegant figures, figures that are going to be posed a little more elegantly or going to be walking or standing in a more formal way, you generally want to have the head more upright and the back more arched. You want to have a, a military posture uh, to the guy. So I want to start off, and I generally don't like to have figures looking straight forward. I, I don't like the idea of doing a figure that just standing there like this. You know, it, it, uh, I, I generally like to have the body turn, the head turn, or something just to bring a little bit of life to the figure. Especially important to bring subtle things like that when you're doing a figure that's essentially standing there saying, look how beautiful my clothing looks. Uh, which an awful lot of models we do, basically that's what they're saying. You know, yeah. look how good my uniform looks. You were never a plebe, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, get a load of this outfit that I'm wearing. You know, I mean, a lot of models that you see at model shows, it seems like the figure is saying just that, you know. So... If he's got to say that, then it better be something pretty good, you know. So uh, I'm going to start off, and you can see this guy. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to probably start off by putting his. Uh, I'm thinking that he's going to have, and and this is literally I'm my presentation today is sort of to kind of walk you through the thought process of starting this, and I'm essentially thinking out loud as I'm working. <coughs> I literally hadn't decided what I was going to do with this guy when I got here, but it's starting to kind of form in my mind. I'm thinking to myself that he's got, and looking at these pictures, he's got to have, he's not going to have a whole bunch of equipment on him because he's just standing on a parade ground, essentially. And But what he is going to have is a sword, and a, a pretty nice sword, as it happens. One I haven't made yet, I'll make that <laughs> later. But he's going to have a sword on this hip. That's going to be a very interesting feature for this guy because he's got to have the clothing, you know, the fancy clothing. Hopefully, Mr. Smith will be okay with me putting the cloak over him. So you'll have the you'll have the cloak draped over the arms, but you'll have those kind of that sleeve and the jacket with the gold lace and all that kind of popped out in front and everything else. But the idea of maybe having his hand resting on his sword on that side. So the idea of maybe having that side facing the viewer. So now I'm thinking. 
standing more upright but looking to the side maybe he's looking at uh, troops parading across the parade ground or something like that or overseeing a drill that's going on but having his sword here having his face turned in that direction I always want the face to be turned to the viewer I mean very rarely do I have faces away from the viewer because the face is it's the window to the soul you know I mean it's the it's the part of the figure that people look at first you know, those got a model, the first thing they look at, does it look real? And where do you look at on a model to say if it looks real? You look at the face, you know. So I want to give the viewer a chance to see the face, plus the face is going to tell us who he is. So his face is going to be moving a little bit to the left. He's going to have his hand up on uh, his sword. Uh, and the other arm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the other arm right now, but I don't think it's going to be important. It's not going to be anything fancy, so I don't have to mess around with his shoulder. It may just be down at his side. Uh, it may also be on his hip. I'm not sure. But he's going to have one hand resting on his sword. So with the idea of his hand resting on his sword, I'm not sure if I have the head in exactly. Well, actually, I've already got that drilled. Let me just cut off a piece here. Now what I'm thinking is, I've just got to see about tilting his uh, upper body just a little bit now to accommodate um, him raising his, uh, or resting his hand on his hip.